Hey everyone, Isabel Fox here. Today we're going to talk about how to prepare for an overnight booking. If you haven't done a full overnight booking with a client before, it can seem a little bit daunting to think that you're going to have such an extended period of time with a client, to think that you're going to be sleeping next to them, potentially eating meals with them, except expected to perform for an elongated period of time. Certainly most of the girls that I work with when they have their first ever overnight booking, they're full of questions, they're unsure of how to prepare, they don't know really what's expected of them. And if it's your client's first time, he might not know either. So it's good if you have an idea of how to run these things. So I'm going to go through today exactly how I run an overnight booking, how I prepare for it in advance, and what I do during the booking to make sure the client has the maximum satisfactory experience. If you don't know already, an overnight booking is generally a 12 hour booking and generally clients book this overnight. So you will arrive at let's say 7 p.m. and you will leave at 7 a.m. Occasionally you will get clients who want to book a 12 hour during the, during the day. I recommend that if your overnight rate advertised is specifically for an overnight, that if a client decides to book you for 12 hours during the day, you should probably increase the price. The reason being is that you'll have to do a lot more work because you'll be awake the whole time. If you have an overnight booking, I generally suggest telling your client that you require five to six hours sleep. If you tell them to five to six, it's more likely that you'll get four to five, which is pretty acceptable in my opinion, but obviously that's up to you, given the fact that they're paying you a lot of money not just to sleep, to obviously have a good time together, but it does still include sleep. So if I were to do a 12 hour booking from say 9 a.m. till 9 p.m., I would charge a considerable amount more for that experience. So step one is you need to screen your client beforehand. There is a level of intimacy and vulnerability that you enter into if you're with a client for such an extended period of time. Also when you're sleeping with them and other people perhaps don't know where you are, so I would take extra caution in screening your client if you haven't met with them before. If you have met with them before and you feel more confident, perhaps you've met with them a number of times, then the higher level of screening may not be necessary. But let's assume that a client has contacted you for the first time and they want to meet with you immediately for an overnight booking, which certainly does happen. So I will usually ask a client who wants to spend a full night with me for photo ID. If you haven't spent and spent any time with them before, I think that's a pretty reasonable request. Many clients will accommodate this given the fact that they're wanting to spend such a long period of time with you. If you're staying at a hotel and the client won't give you their photo ID, then at least ask for the client's full name plus their room number. And before you go to the hotel, you should be calling the hotel reception to verify this information. If they're staying at a five-star hotel, Generally, if reception is doing their job properly, they won't transfer you through to the room unless the name matches it accurately. So let's say my client's staying in room 123 and he tells me that his name is John Smith. When I call the reception at, say, the Western Hotel, they technically shouldn't put me through unless all of those elements match. So if I say Jacob Smith for room 123, they shouldn't put me through. If I say room 122, John Smith, they shouldn't put me through. It's a part of their privacy policy that they won't correct you or just say, oh, you've got it wrong by one number. However, that being said, it does happen. And just a week ago, one of my girls went to a hotel and we hadn't quoted the right information because the client had given us the wrong information, but we were still put through. That's highly unusual. If you're dealing with a hotel that's anything less than five stars, so let's say you're calling to confirm a room name and number at the Best Western, it's highly probable that they will just transfer you through with only a room number and that they won't actually verify the information. So in that case, I would be pushing even more so for photo ID. If your client is coming to your in-call for the first time and spending the night with you there, if they won't give you photo ID, and you've decided for whatever reason that you're still willing to see them, then I would make sure that someone knows where you are. So a friend, somebody who can act as a point of contact, who is expecting to hear from you when the client arrives and also when they leave and who takes action, that's important, not just waits for a call and then does nothing, but who takes action if they don't hear from you. And you should be speaking with that person beforehand to explain to them exactly how do you want them to take action. 
So it's not just a off the cuff sort of situation. You should have something like that prepared. If you're in a situation where you are totally independent, nobody knows that you work, you're working from an in-call, you can't call to verify a room, the client won't give photo ID, and for whatever reason you've decided that you still want to go ahead with the booking, then I suggest that you have a phone call with your client before they arrive. Similar to when you're dating on Tinder, a phone call will tell you a lot about what a person is like as opposed to just texting or emailing. When you can hear a voice, you can see how they communicate with you. It will tell you a lot about whether or not you should be even entertaining the idea of meeting with this person without extra ID. When you're working from an in-call as well, a good tip is to have a home phone or a permanently charging phone in a room that locks from the inside. So for instance, if your bathroom has a lock on the inside, you should have a phone that's hidden away that you can run into, shut the door, lock it, and make a phone call at the minimum to the police from that phone. So that's another handy tip for you. If you are working by yourself, you don't have any point of check-in, then you should have a phone like that so that you can call for somebody if the worst should occur. Also, what you can do is pretend to make a security call in front of your client if, again, you don't have any of these things in place, but you want the client to at least think that you're not alone. So what I'll do in that situation is once the client enters or I enter the client's room, however that is going, I will say to them, just give me a moment. I'm going to call my friend to make my security call. And I will very clearly say security call because I want them to realize that this isn't just a call for me to say hey to a friend, that I want them to know that I'm checking in so that somebody knows where I am and that I have some sort of security procedures in place. So then I will make the call in front of the client. I will speak to the person in front of the client, or at least I will pretend to. And I will say, yes, I'll check in with you later tonight. Or yes, I'll check in with you in a few hours. So the client knows that there is somebody who is waiting to hear from you. And then later on in the booking, you should be following up to do just that so that you continue on with that. So they realize that it isn't just talk. This might make your client feel a little bit uncomfortable. Perfect. We want him to feel uncomfortable. We want him to know that he's not, that you're not alone and that somebody knows where you are. Even if they don't really, perception is everything. So don't worry about the client feeling uncomfortable. Just be professional, be positive, go about it as if this is just a normal part of your day and they will be fine. Secondly, you want to communicate with your client before arrival. So there are some things that you want to know about your client and there are some things that you want them to know about you and how you run this service. So the first thing that I like to ask a client before spending a whole night with them is if they've actually had an overnight booking with an escort before. Not because one or the other is better, but it just gives me a better gauge of how prepared I should be, how nervous the client may be, and how naturally the booking may evolve. Now, even if it is a client's first time, that doesn't mean that they're going to be a bunch of nerves and be unsure of what to do and not have a strong sense of what they want. You have clients who have never done this before, but who are just perfectly at ease taking, as it, as, taking it as it comes. But as a general rule, a client who hasn't had an experience like this before will probably be more nervous. That's something you need to be sensitive of and will probably look to you for more direction. So in that instance, what I would do is I would be really clear with my communication to explain to the client how an overnight booking usually works. So you want to explain to them that you will arrive at a certain time, that you will generally have a meal together or have some sort of food together in a 12 hour window. If that's at your own in-call or location, you might be the one to organize the food. You might order in, you might have it ready. Or if it's at their hotel, generally you'll just get room service. So I make it clear to the client that that's going to be a part of our experience. And I'm sure that most people will be wanting to eat in a 12 hour period. I've never had an overnight booking where the client didn't also want to eat. So I'll outline that for them. I'll make it really clear when my finish time is and that I will need a short period of time before that to get ready to go. I'll also ask them if they have any special requests. 
I'll ask them if I need to be sensitive around being discreet for whatever reason. Are you staying in a hotel on a work trip? Are there other work people in the hotel that I need to be aware of? Generally, if that's the case, the client will be the one to tell you about that first. But basically, at any time, if you have a client who has made it clear that they haven't done this before, you should take just that extra bit of care in running through each step with them. Just the same as if you were utilizing a service for the first time and you were less aware of how things worked, you'd probably want somebody to take charge in just laying that out for you clearly. So I've already touched on eating together. I would ask the client more questions about that dependent on the situation. So if it's a hotel, probably all you really need to say is something along the lines of, great, would you like to order in together? You may have a situation where the client wants to actually go down to the hotel restaurant or go somewhere else nearby to eat. I would clarify that with your client, especially if you are somebody who does not do public meets with clients and there are plenty of escorts who won't do that for sake of privacy. If you are one of those people, then you want to make it clear to the client. I generally find that it's better that we eat alone in the room. That way it's more discreet. We can be more relaxed and we're able to continue our private time together during the meal. Basically, you're saying I'm willing to kiss you and touch you and act like an escort while I'm with you alone. But if we're in public, I'm not going to go anywhere near you because I'm too afraid that people will see us. So if you make it clear to the client that for sake of discretion, it will be better for them if you stay in the room then they'll appreciate that. And I've never had a client say, oh, I absolutely have to go out and that's a deal breaker. But again, if that is a deal breaker, that's fine. But you want to know that in advance because you're going to avoid a very awkward situation. If you arrive at the client's hotel and he's ready to go out for a meal, just assuming that that's what you're willing to do. And then you have to say to him then and there, I won't do that. Lastly, always ask your clients, always, 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 if they have any special requests. Because sometimes they will have requests, but if they're nervous, they might forget to ask. Or if they haven't got them, you can ignite their curiosity to talk to you about the things that you have to offer. So then that's a great opportunity for you to sell your style or your quality of service. If you have anything that you want to upsell, then this is a fantastic opportunity to do that as well. So if you're going from a GFE to a PSE, then this is a great time to talk about that. Or if you have just extra services that you want to charge more for, this is a good time to talk about that too. Next, you want to explain clearly to your client, whether they are new or not, that you require five to six hours of sleep. Like I said earlier, if you tell a client five to six hours, it is most likely that you're probably going to get four to five. You really do want to avoid the situation and expectation of staying up all night and performing. That's really draining and that's not really what an overnight booking is about. If you are willing to offer that, then great. But most people I have worked with prefer to have five to six hours of sleep. And that's generally part of the experience, the sleeping together. That's why they book the overnight. And most clients prefer to get some rest as well. So I would make that clear. I would also communicate very clearly around what is owed to you at the time of arrival. When I'm doing an overnight booking, I always get a deposit because I'm setting such a large period of time aside. It also acts as a good qualifier for how serious your client is. If they're willing to make a 10% deposit against a purchase that is thousands of dollars, then that's a good sign. If they're not willing to do that, then they're probably not the right client for you. So let your client know how much you're expected to be paid minus their deposit when you arrive. That way the business can just be as smooth as possible. And just like in a normal booking, you want to get your payment up front, excuse yourself to the bathroom and count your money before everything begins. You don't want to be four hours into your booking and then count your funds only to find that the client has shortchanged you, even if it's accidentally. And in most cases it actually is accidental but then you have to stop the booking and sort that situation out when you're mid fun. So always best to be professional and deal with that upfront. I also like to let my client know, and this goes back to your security screening and processes, that you may need to check your phone two to three times during the night. And when you deliver that information, you, you want to say, it's simply for me to check in with somebody for them to know that I'm safe. You don't wanna be going on your phone two to three times during the booking to check Instagram or to text your boyfriend because he thinks that you're elsewhere. What you want is really just a moment alone so that you can tick off the security procedures 
and also for the client to know that you're going to have a couple of minutes break from from them so this is a good way for you to just get a few minutes alone you can even step out of the room or go down to the hotel bathroom to do that but i would try and minimize this as much as possible generally just stepping away into the bathroom is enough you don't really need to leave the room but if you want to do that then this is a good reason for why you should have to it also just breaks up the time with your client as well 12 hours alone with one person in what is usually a small room can be a bit much so having ways to break these things up is really helpful next you want to plan your booking in advance now when i do a multi-hour booking so let's say a three or a four hour booking which is still a long booking i generally break those bookings up hour by hour i especially did this at the start of my career when i was less experienced and less able to just go with the flow i would really break that three hour booking into three segments and i would come up with sort of a plan just a rough one for each hour so i recommend you doing the same thing when it comes to your overnight bookings and this is generally the natural segment that takes place you have your part one of the booking which is really just your arrival and what will be your first round of sex so arrival will include the usual chit chat sitting down relaxing you're not in a huge rush you have 12 hours together so most clients are very happy to indulge in this you might have a glass of champagne or a glass of wine you might look at the food menu and decide to order in that time so that it's ready especially if you're at a hotel where it takes a long time for the food to come but this first segment is really your arrival and you'll have your first round of sex in that period of time too most clients will want to have sex early on because they're excited and you're sitting there and they're alone and they probably can't help themselves to wait for too many hours into the booking and why should they that's what you're there for so you'll find that the arrival includes the first round of sex then the second part of the booking is really the dinner and the eating part and i take this time as well to refresh myself after the first round and after having eaten and i brush my teeth and i have a shower so you can really use section two for that eating dinner especially in room service doesn't actually take that long it's only like 20 minutes half an hour to eat a meal if you go out to a restaurant this part will stretch out way more because you obviously have all of your rest time in between meals you have to get to the hotel you have to wait for someone to serve you yada yada i mean to the restaurant if you're eating in the room this will generally be a shorter process so you need to allow for that but you can stretch this out a bit by suggesting dessert together which you might want to have a rest before you do that you can also stretch it out by having more wine or just eating more slowly i suppose but if you're eating in the room that will be a shorter period of time than if you go out to a restaurant and the refreshing really takes the same amount of time as it does whether you've gone out for dinner or not it depends on you as to whether or not you want to refresh with your client i like to have a good amount of alone refreshing time during an overnight booking again just so i can break it up so that i'm not just sitting with this one person for 12 hours so i'll excuse myself and refresh however if you're going to have a shower at this time it's a great opportunity to shower with your client and insert something different and new for them there the next segment will be your pre-bed sex and sleep there's almost always pre-bed sex unless for some reason you guys have had too much to drink and maybe your clients passed out or can no longer perform or if their sexual appetite isn't that high but generally you'll find that once you do your refreshing you'll have sex again right before you go to sleep and you'll also use this time to get yourself ready for bed which we'll go into in a moment and the last part is really the morning sex and the exit we'll go through a detailed run over of what the timing could look like in a booking but let's say you've got a 12 hour 12 hour booking from 7 p.m till 7 a.m and you are active with your client from 7 p.m till midnight and you sleep for five hours then you wake up at 5 a.m you've only got two hours together now you probably need 20 minutes at the end to wrap everything up it might even take a little bit longer if if your client's fine with that but i would allow 20 minutes at the minimum to wrap things up so you've got an hour and 40 minutes some clients will want to get up and have breakfast together others will want to sleep in a little bit more and not use that time on breakfast or others will want to use that time on having more play with you so the morning period though is really just one segment 
Next, you want to have ideas and ways to break up your booking. So I've already mentioned stepping out of the room a couple of times, not a lot, just a couple of times, but you want to have actual ideas to break it up in a sexual way, especially if you get there and you find that you and your client don't connect. What you hope and what you generally find is that you get to an overnight, the attitude and the atmosphere is very much to relax and have a great intimate time together. There's generally a lot of talking and luxuriating in the drinking and the eating and in the sex. However, every now and then, if, especially if you do a lot of overnights, you will of course find, as is natural, that you get a client that you maybe don't have great chemistry with or who you feel is particularly difficult to get along with. In that scenario, I like to have different ways to break up the booking and for us to do together or to distract from always having to talk. We've gone through ideas like this in the past, but I'll lay them out again now. Having different outfit options and dress ups is a really easy crowd place that always works for all clients. So pack with you a few different outfits. Your client will appreciate that you've gone to that effort and you can take a moment during the booking to say, I brought different things to kind of model for you. I'll put them all on. You can see which one you like most and then you can rip, rip it off my body later. So that's a good one. Bringing different toys is a great idea. Having a sex game can be fun. So you can pick this up at a sex store or any sort of novelty store. And there are all different sorts. There's like sex roll of the dice, sex cards. You can do poker, uh, strip poker, things like that. But that can be fun, especially if you're drinking and especially if your client has that sort of personality. Having a shower or a bath together is always a winner. Almost all clients enjoy a naked massage. Watching porn isn't really for everybody, but it can be a good, fun, creative idea. And lastly is I often like to bring my overnight clients a gift. So something easy, which will again break up the time would be a dessert to share. You could also bring a bottle of champagne. If you know your client really well and you know that there's something that they particularly like, I would bring that. Your gift might actually take the form of one of these things. So your gift could be a sex game. Your gift could be a toy for the client to leave with if they're that way inclined. Your gift could be certain porn that you've got that you know that they're going to like. I generally don't recommend personalizing a gift too much if you don't know somebody because it's kind of not appropriate and you could also just waste your time and money doing something that doesn't really work for the client. So if it's a client that you haven't met before, a dessert to share or a bottle of wine or champagne is almost always going to be a winner. Let's talk about how to sleep next to a client and how to handle the bedtime. This is the part that I find that a lot of people seem to have anxiety about. So the best way to handle this straight up is to just discuss it with your client once you're with them. Actually have an open conversation with them about the wake up time and about how they want to manage that. So let's say you did have the 7 p.m. till the 7 a.m. finish. Then I would simply say to my client, would you like us to set an alarm at 5 a.m. so that we have plenty of time to have fun in the morning before I go? If your client declines and says, no, I would prefer to sleep in and just wake up when we feel that we're awake, then great. You can do that and be happy to do that because your client has said so. But I really like to make a point of making sure that they get value for the, all the time that they're spending with me and for the money that they're spending. I will have mouthwash and refreshing items ready in the bathroom. I always like to wake up before my client, go and refresh myself for obvious reasons and then get back into bed to get to the fun. I'll have condoms and lube ready next to the bed. Nothing worse than getting up, waking up in the morning and getting started on the fun and then having to get up and rummage around in the dark or turn lights on. It's a real mood killer to try and find your necessary items. So just be prepared and have them ready. Sleep naked or in something sexy. If you wear flannelette pajamas to bed, don't take them to your overnight booking. Take something lacy or if worse comes to worse, sleep in a thong or sleep naked. No one's going to really dislike that. I do suggest that you bring earplugs and an eye mask. If you haven't met this person, if they're an older male, they're probably going to snore. If you're not used to sleeping next to a snorer, then that's not going to be great for you. So bring those things with you so that you can try to be as refreshed as possible. Some girls I know will take sleeping tablets and things like that with them. If you're familiar with using those products and you know how it affects you and you feel confident in doing that, then fine. I generally recommend not doing that because even though you'll be a bit tired 
at least you'll be switched on and alert in a natural way. Most of those medications tend to make people drowsy and especially if you're not used to using them, you don't want to run the risk that they make you feel really bad. Or if you've been drinking a lot the night before, it's probably best that you don't mix that sort of medication. So I personally prefer to stay away from that. But if you have something that works for you, then by all means use it. Try to get a silent alarm and a Fitbit or an Apple Watch is great for this. That way you can wake yourself up, go get ready at the time you and your client have agreed on, and then you can naturally wake the client up in a sexy way, as opposed to having this horrible blaring alarm going off in the morning. I always like to give my client a blowjob in the morning. It's kind of the ultimate girlfriend experience there. And I will try to put soft lighting on to avoid complete darkness. Sometimes that the complete darkness fantasy is sexy at first, but most men are visual, visual and are going to want to see you. So I would recommend putting on a soft lighting or just putting on the torch on your phone and flipping your phone over so it's just not too bright, but it does light up the room a little bit so that your client can see you because that's what he wants. Lastly, the morning sex and exit. Always have morning sex. Every client wants morning sex. At least try to give him morning sex. If you can't perform, that's fine. That's not on you. But always go to the effort to make the time and to instigate it. Don't sleep in till 15 minutes before your finished time and then just leave. Overnight's all about a true girlfriend experience. That's why the client books you. And the ultimate girlfriend wakes her boyfriend up every morning with a blowjob and you are the girlfriend he always wished he could have and that now he can afford. So make sure you do that for your client. It will make a really big difference. Minimize the time that you need to get ready to go. Your client has paid a lot of money. He's not paying for you to put your clothes on and have a shower and wash your hair and do your makeup and pack your bag just so. It really shouldn't take that long for you to have a quick rinse, make yourself look presentable, put on some casual clothes for sake of remaining discreet. You don't want to leave the Western Hotel at 7 a.m. on a Thursday morning when 9 to 5 workers are just starting to bustle about wearing your silk dress with a slit up the fly with up the thigh with your tits hanging out that might be great to arrive in under a coat i recommend but you don't want to have to leave in the morning looking like that and your client probably won't appreciate you bringing attention to yourself that way most of us are very concerned about our privacy your client is just as concerned about his and he's just as aware of people thinking that he spent time with an escort as you are aware of people thinking that you are an escort. So be sensitive to that. Take a nice casual outfit, jeans, flats, and a top, whatever is appropriate, appropriate for the weather and change into that on exit. You'll find that your client will actually like to see you in that sort of outfit as well. It brings a sort of human humanness to it. When you communicate with your client about how they would like the morning to go, I suggest you talk about fantasies. See if there's something that they've always wanted to do that you can fulfill. Perhaps you would have already discussed this with them in your pre-meet conversations. But if you haven't, then this is a really great time to do that as well. So here's an example runtime of how a booking may go. Using our 7 p.m. till 7 a.m. example. The first hour and a half to two hours is going to be the arrival, the chatting, the working out what room service is going to be and the first round of sex. Then the next hour and a half to an hour is going to be dinner, assuming you're eating in the room. Then you want to spend just a short amount of time wrapping up that dinner. You also want to shower and refresh yourself, either with or without your client. Then the next thing that I like to go to for just over an hour is I'll try and bring in one of the ideas that I have pre-prepared to excite my client if I feel it's necessary. Sometimes you've just got something that's running so naturally, there's really no need for you to do that. So don't feel like you have to do these things if that's the case, but it's always great to have these things ready and it will always win you brownie points and make you stand out from others if they have other overnight bookings with escorts who probably don't plan these sorts of things. So in this round, or in this period of time, you're going to have more sex. You will find that clients in an overnight will really try to have multiple rounds of sex for obvious reasons. So be prepared for that physically and with your condoms. Then the last 15 minutes, I'll get ready for bed and actually get into bed to sleep before we go to say midnight. Then you want to spend ideally five hours sleeping. Then you'll spend the morning waking up, having sex with your client again, 
You may have breakfast with them, get ready to go. You might have one last little nip of sex that does happen. Be prepared for that. So that's an example of how your booking may run. Now, if you start at a different time, let's say from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., your time in the morning might be a bit shorter and you might have longer in the evening. So just kind of shuffle that around however you think is best appropriate. That's all for today, everybody. I hope this video in how to run an overnight booking has been helpful. Give it a go. And as always, contact me for any feedback.